Just okay. little speed bumps. Yep. But this is what that's happens. How you know. This is what happens. That's how you know it's worth watching. And this is how you know it's real. It's real dotes because it had a, a slight boo boo at the start. What, Wyvern and <laughs> Lion. They've, I'm sure they've been playing quite a lot of Wyvern and Lion because I definitely, in the game we just watched, I'm sure there was a Wyvern and a Lion in there, but I think they were on opposite teams. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. Visage. Well, Good I'm going to go as far as saying as the picks we're going to be seeing here are mostly just going to be comfort what the teams enjoy playing the most. But you, if you, you like, we could talk smart? about these. Of course, of course, because at the end of the day, the, the best way to play Dota and not be nervous is to just play what you're good at, right? Of course. I'm just thinking if you're going to do something something uh, crazy, if you've got some, <laughs> some, some crazy pocket strat, you do it in game one, so you've still got a chance to come back. I think saving it for the for the potential KO game is 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 when you don't take chances. So if they Very were if they were going to do something funky, I would have done it now. And Visage is kind of a funky but, pick. Yeah. You don't see this very much. That that's what I was about to say. You're talking about pulling something out in game one. First phase Visage is always it. Now Absolutely. this is one of the heroes where typically you don't see him in first phase because he is very easy to play around if he's introduced early on in the draft. Right, but a hero playing it comfortably with a team that can support him can make way for draft accommodations. Mm. Right, Visage is a very interesting hero in my opinion. I was hoping we'd see a bit more of him this patch so far, but he hasn't really picked up in competitive play. Good, but I hate Visage. <laughs> Why? Why? This hero has a lot of potential, but <sighs> also, no, no. also, if you fall behind on Visage, I just feel like he feels like a ranged creep. If his birds die and you're playing from behind, you're kind of just... I, I just think if... if I, around. You know what this looks like to me? If I'm playing oh. Pub Dota and I just go in and the enemy team first picks Visage and the guy's like a level 30 Visage and, you know, you look and they're unranked and you think, oh, here we go. That's what it feels <laughs> like to me. You're just going to get stomped. Someone who's just like a Visage expert. They can't play anything else. But on this hero, they're a god. <laughs> that's what it feels like. That that's true. He can be very, very snowbally. But that that's what it is, right? It's a snowbally hero if you're playing at mid, for example, and it can be played around. So I'm just a fan of the hero. I think he makes for a very interesting Dota in the mechanics of flying the birds around the map and you know scouting out or setting right. up for kills or just I, I I enjoy heroes that add multiple multiple dimensions to mm. their play. So. Well, I'm excited. Let's see how it works what, out. What are you? You were talking about counters to Visage. That if you pick him first, he's easily countered. What would you say is a, is a the the strongest few counters you can pick for, for Visage? But typically, with Visage, you just need heroes that can get on top of him and kill him, right? So supports that can just gank mid early if he is. Uh, a core obviously he can be played as a support he does very well on aggro lanes with his nuke that's so right. spammable but uh typically he just needs to die early enough and you can build items to counter him right you can build like crimson guards and solar crests and any, any kind of hero that counters summons right it's it's the same concept as a beast master mm. he's just a little bit more annoying with his ability to you know buy his ags and move around the map and scout things out do you think he scales particularly well because I've always felt like no. you said, like you said, snowbally, have this early Snowball. thing, and then later on just kind of dips off. But uh, mm -hmm. Life Stealer, so, I feel like that that's that's your man right there. He's a guy who can go absolutely nuts. <laughs> but they have got Slana, which I always think of as like the, the most crushing blow to a Life Stealer, other than a Razor, <laughs> is a Slana. Yeah, all right. So we talked about a lot of Visage, but we, we can unpack a lot of the other heroes. So. I think it might be safe to assume that it's a support visage just because typically you don't want to reveal your two core heroes in the first phase, right? And this life stealer doesn't really have much room for flexibility, period. You see yeah. a life stealer, you know he's going. You know what he's going to do. Unless they're yeah. doing some funky visage life stealer support combo. Can he infest the birds, Effie? He can, can't he? He can. So that's can. it. You get him in the bird. The bird flies against against just one bird. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly he pops out. <laughs> He's right on you. And then you got a pangolier in amongst you. What are you going to do? There there you go. The strategy uncounterable, undefeatable. Uh, now, uh, are the Visage birds, does Winter Wyvern Alt suck them into the mix, or do they just crack on with their job? I think they're going to turn no, around they, and... No, they, they, hit, they hit the target. So you, But you could just Alt Visage then, and his birds are going to turn on him in some, some kind of dreadful about face. 
Yep, some kind of high-level betrayal by his children. Also, you've picked Pangolin into Winter Wyvern. I think he just can't. He just he can cancel your ult, can't he? This is all kinds of trouble. I think a three-letter well, acronym. Mm -hmm. That that's a very good point. Winter Wyvern is an excellent hero in playing versus Pangolier. Whoa, where did the screen go? Oh, I'm sure it'll come back. There you go. Oh, <laughs> I, I... <laughs> we're back. We're back. And just give it a just sec. That... There we go. Yeah. It happens. So when. Winter Wyvern can stop this Pangol ult, but if no one's next to him, it's just like two seconds of, of stopping it, but that two seconds can do a lot. Yeah. But if you're using your Winter's Curse on Pangolier, you can't use it on the units near Visage or other heroes. Yes, so true. There, there's a trade-off here for sure. Um, Pangolier is a hero who I think is shining so much recently, oh, and I it's just because hero. he loves to skirmish, he defends towers, he just fights early with giving his shield crash slow he's so much more dependable level one so much more dependable in rune fights and on lane also i'll and be honest with just... you if you get items on this lad like if you get items it's not like he sort of falls off he becomes even scarier and i think his all the like his his ags his shard and farm he becomes even better he's awesome Absolutely. i love him yeah. i love him Typical new fun. hero from Valve there. Typical. <laughs> Strong at all stages of the game. Ridiculous. How old are you to say this is a new hero? Pangler has been around for like, what, three years now? That's Four new. Now? How long? Look at Slada. Look at Slada. You tell me you know... Pango's not a new hero. Slada's like a thousand years old. He's been in the game forever. He was one of the heroes Kidding. when, the, when Dota 2 came out in beta. I think he was one of the first heroes in it. Do you know what I consider a new hero? Go on. Dawnbreaker, that's the new hero. Pango's Pango new. Hero. He's one of the he's new, had... <laughs> new nope. bunch. Nope, he's he's fitting very well with the rest of the bunch. He's just one of the homies. He's not. He's too strong. That's my point. Is they design these heroes that they're, they're too good. Look at look at Wingnut, right? <laughs> look at Wingnut. I mean, it's good, but it's not that good. For example, you pick Bloodseeker versus Pango. What does he do? Um, he gets yeah. ruptured. Yeah, and yeah. He's just out of there. Yeah, right? it's true. But then you have to hope your Bloodseeker actually uses Rupture on Pango, which, believe me, in my games, you know, you're struggling to get him to <laughs> to do that. Why have they Why have they banned Storm here? Do you think? Uh, it sounds like you are traumatized. <laughs> I'm a little. I th I think they've banned Storm because they they know themselves they lack easy lockdown for for someone like a Storm. Uh, unless Illegal uh, have a top top Storm player that is also a targeted pick, I would just say I wouldn't want to play against uh, a Storm here. So yeah, I'm pretty sure they banned Storm just because Jamie plays games is very comfortable and confident on the hero, I see. and Storm is just a really nice hero to jump on something like a Pangolier or Alina in the back lines. If he can get the Pangolier before he gets his alt off, they lose their team fight ability mm. because you're looking at a Visage lifestyle Alina draft. There is no one really there to start the fights or to be the team fighter, the, mm. the agent of chaos. You're so right. Speak. Storm would so have done hero, that. Yeah, a hero like Storm can just jump on him and negate that completely. Yeah. Rendering three letter acronyms draft kind of it would make it way too difficult to yeah. get into, right? Yeah. But you know, Pyrian, we've talked a lot about the Radiant heroes, but we haven't looked at Dire heroes. Right? Well, yeah. So they got baseless void, so you know, what are you gonna <laughs> say? I mean they banned the invoker because that combo was just stupid. The Void Invoker combo. I'm sick of seeing it in my games. Get rid of it. Cataclysms with with Chrono is, is stupid. I'm glad they I'm glad they banned it. But well played, TLA. <laughs> there, there you go. But one thing to comment on is actually something you said already, which is Slardar lanes very well against Lifesteal. Oh, he do. So obviously, Slardar versus any kind of melee carry is going to be very hard for the melee carry facing him, especially depending on the support behind him. If you pair up a Slardar with a lion, that's insane kill mm. potential. It's absolutely absurd. So I'm expecting a lot of action or a lot of dominance coming out of this yeah, illegal for offlane. Sure. Um, the Faceless Void pick is just, Faceless Void is a nice hero, right? He's good against Lifestealer, like carry to carry matchup, because you can just kind of chrono him and hit him away. And same yeah. goes for Pangolier. He he can just jump on these backline heroes or just start the fight for his team if need be. That's the nice thing about a Void carry. If you don't have that early initiation with Slardar with the Blink Dagger, because he has downtime, right? You have the Faceless Void with the Time Walk Chronosphere, who can kind of lead these fights until Slardar has his Blink. So there's a little bit of nice synergy there. I the agree. one issue is the chrono damage isn't quite there it yet, is not but... there i was gonna say outside the chronosphere they haven't really got much uh slaughter's not gonna do much wyvern, eh, wyvern does decent damage but, for sure 
But they got the they, bug foot. Hello. They do have an, no, they do have enough. It's just not like a huge chrono. Right, right, but, right. You know, with the amp damage from Slardar, Void should oh, be able to do point. his own damage. And Puck can obviously just like shoot his orbs and maybe right click outside. Also, you know oh, what? No, just... I'll be honest with you. I feel like there are a few few spells in the game. The one really good black hole, chronosphere, egg can be like boom, fight one. And like you said, against other carries, if Void gets you in there, he's just like, ba -da -ba 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 -da -ba 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 that's it, <laughs> fight one. <laughs> so yeah, that's all it takes. <laughs> he's like, what? Why would you repeat that? <laughs> ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba. Exactly. That's how it goes. I, I agree. Ba -da -ba -da -ba. But I just want to shout out this Phoenix pick really quick. Something I was talking about earlier is there is too much on Pangolier's shoulders to be the team fighter on this team too. So to follow it up with the Phoenix is nice. They yeah. have that little bit of added team fight. They can also defend the egg with the swashbuckle disarm mm. and hopefully really well set up light strike arrays from you Lina. Can, you know what? The Phoenix can also pee on the, his mate in the, in the chronosphere if he needs to, to keep him alive. So there you go. Oh, I can't move the camera. There, I, there you go. There, there, there you go. <laughs> I, I expect a lot of um, skirmishes from both teams, just given the heroes that they have. It, it's probably going to be a little bit easier for Radiant side to fight early on, but Dire can have excellent pickoff potential, excellent follow-up potential with the coil on mm. top of the chronosphere. And these fights are just going to be a matter of who maneuvers better, who outplays the other. It's going to be a bloodbath. You know, I'm so glad you said that, Effie, that you said skirmishes and not squirmishes, which, <laughs> which I've heard multiple Dota commentators use the term squirmish instead of skirmish, not as a joke, but they just say squirmish. And, and me, me, how do you pronounce, is it melee or, or melee? I say melee. It, it melee, Long. melee is fine. It, it's melee or melee, that's fine, but not melee, not melee. Which is, is another thing is that, that some not... other Dota cast to say it's not melee. It's it's melee or or melee, melee. or melee if you want, but not melee. <laughs> so okay, it's not fine, melee fine. and it's not squirmish. We've already crossed those bridges, and I'm glad to see you're on the right side of history here. <laughs> Thank goodness. I mean, squirmish is a whole different word. It is. And, you know, it's it's laviosa, not laviosa. What? <laughs> I missed Never that one. Mind. You're, you're too. You're no, too no, old. say it again. I'm not. How dare you, first of all? But I want you to say you're it again. Far, I am. You're far too old. <laughs> I'm not saying it. I said it's Leviosa. Leviosa? You don't know I know what Leviosa, Leviosa. That's, that's Harry Potter. He says that when they're doing levitation spells. All or right, something, so how do you miss it the first time? What did I mess up? You missed it. I missed it because I was talking. <laughs> I can't talk and listen. It's one or the other, right? Very... But I was talking. I know. Too. I'm sorry. I'm trying not to, but there is a slight delay between my brain and my mouth, and sometimes. Oh my god! They're just this, this is, fight is oh, oh, oh. bold, bold young puck, very bold. All right. So <laughs> there's a lot to unpack there. Actually, Lena won that one v one trade with no starting items. It was bottle rush build <laughs> with just, one set of tangos, that's and nuts. she beat them. We haven't clicked on Puck's items yet. Can she did have a fairy fire. She did have a fairy fire on the Lena, uh, could, which which could she we used. See so. Yeah, what's what the Puck, Puck got? Had? Oh my yeah, goodness! That's insane. That is insane. So, I think it was just a bit of an oh, overstep no. by Puck to think that oh, he could no. fight the Lena behind her creep wave. Puck yeah, no, I think you're that. right. Oh, Lena, just, 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 just going ham here. Just hey, like that. So the Puck died, came back and tried to show Lena what's what, and now almost died again, and it's basically, basically losing the lane. I'm gonna say. They, they're close fights, but you have to keep in mind that when you're trading with a level 2 Lina and she has her passive up, you're probably not going to win that trade, yeah. even if you outsat the Lina. The mistake that Puck probably made was he just didn't expect that amount of damage coming out because he did have the creep wave hitting him while right, he was right, trading right. with the Lina. Yeah. He, he was... He was positioned so aggressively. And you know, I like I like that spirit. I like that fighting spirit from him because as a puck, you do want to assert your dominance, but a little bit of a miscalculation. Just a tab. Slot are eight and two. So having some fun. It is this is so hard to approach uh the wave here. And I, I do not like this five pango. I'm gonna be perfectly blunt. 
uh, I think that's that's kind of a mistake because you've now got two melee into Slardar, and honestly, oh my goodness, now Puck wants to get get risky here, but Lena, they're both so low. Oh come on, this, this this is classic stuff. This mid lane is brutal. These two, two players are going oh, at it. Two nuki mids and Jamie. Yep. Oh no, Jamie. Is this you know what this is? This is some. This is an anime rivalry oh, happening right knew now. Knew it would come <laughs> down to anime at some point, Effie. I saw the posters on your wall, and I thought, let's just do a mental countdown before anime is mentioned in a positive way. And there it is. Stop. This. This is Sasuke versus Naruto at the Valley of the End. This Two minutes, epic. fifty-six seconds. Mark it down. We lasted that long before <laughs> the cast went south with anime references. <laughs> Fine, I will retire them and I can stick to Harry Potter references. Anyway, it looks like this puck is going for a double null build, which is really nice for early stats, but I do think obviously he's going to have to go to for the bottle first. Right. Maybe going for a double null after not having the greatest lead isn't the best, but obviously Jamie has his idea of how he wants to play. Right. And he's just buying them to win the lane and just out CS, so let's see how it goes. I'll be honest with you, this this lion is just going to, like, Pango does not have a big mana pool. And one of my favorite things to do when I play an offlane lion is just take the nice mana. Stun. Oh, that is a great stun. Oh, oh here we go. Oh, oh nice dodge. Nice wow. Dodge. He, jaunt he, he jaunted it. out and disjointed the attack projectile. Little, little well shout out to done, LD. Jamie. Little LD reference there. Old school. You're too young. I'll say what? that. You're too young. What, what did I miss? Did you not hear my reference? God, this is just what, what sweet, sweet revenge. <laughs> the puck face shift dodged an attack. It's uh -huh. a reference to a very old cast that LD did. You know LD, okay. right? Yes. At Beyond the Summit. Oh. So it was it was some game and there was a puck. And he was like, can he dodge it here? Wow! And all he did was like, <laughs> just face shift dodge an attack. It's a classic. It's a brilliant video of it okay, on okay, YouTube. I know, you I, know it, it I know it, I know it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Now that you've said it, it's, it, it, it rings very Yeah, funny. I think it was even a voice line. <laughs> I think it might have been a voice line in the game. Wow! <laughs> but he was told wow. so I, I spoke to him about that i was like what was that about and he said that he was told by the tournament organizers that he had to you know come on add some you know add some some spice let's really get the excitement going in these cars so he thought okay so he just tried to overhype everything <laughs> that's so funny okay i can do that <clears throat> lena steps forward <laughs> <laughs> oh life stealer right, is trying to fight slaughter i don't know about this could be trouble uh no he can't um, reach Anyway, like we mentioned during the draft, this bot lane is going to be very action-packed. This oh, yeah. lion slardar combination, so capable of killing. But honestly, this life stealer holding her own. Yeah, definitely getting the farm. Or their own, sorry. Yeah, 20, they're, they're 21 just... and 4, that's okay against a tough lane. I mean, yeah. I, I think that's decent. Yeah, typically when you see um, any kind of melee carry versus a slardar, you would expect them to fall behind. But they're, they've been able to keep up. They're just three CS behind, and it seems like they have not been threatened yet. Right. So very impressive by Greenbox. I, I want to give I, a I, shout out as well to the Pango there for keeping them busy, because I think the Pango just constantly farting around and trying yeah. to uh, to sort of draw the ire of these two meant that uh, mm -hmm. it gave Life Steal the chance to farm. Pango looks like they're setting up for something mid here. Looking Absolutely. for, oh, I think they're guarding the rune actually. It's a rune guard, because this could really uh, help swing things even further. Oh, oh, oh. It's a regen! He's got oh. it! You fool! Kitty, what what a play. She just hid there. She waited for her opportunity. Yep. Was not on vision. Perfect. Puck thought that he was safe, and then just out of nowhere. Yep. There's the pango. There's the pango. What do you do? What what now, do you do? <laughs> Earlier, you were saying that um, you don't. We haven't looked at. Pango. By the way, sorry, we haven't looked at the top lane at all. So let's have a look up there. We've got a Void Wyvern against Phoenix Visage. We've not. I don't think we've seen it for more than. Uh, in fact, I don't think we've seen it at all. Thank you, Rob. I'm intrigued. Uh, this, th this Phoenix is doing so well. He's yeah. just third in terms of last sets. Yeah. Uh, much better than I thought he would be doing against a Void, actually, because when you think of um, offlane Phoenix, oh, he yeah. doesn't really have the best attack animation or. Damage. No, it's dreadful. Something, it's dreadful. Something like a void, right, could easily out deny him. Yeah. But it has to be the combination of the visage, probably just keeping the wyvern busy on the side, allowing for Phoenix to have a comfortable lane. Yeah. And of course, Phoenix is probably going to be able to farm some of these creeps. <laughs> wyvern coming in, 
Yoink. Thank you very much. Bird versus bird. It's ice bird versus fire bird. And there's another bird. The top lane is all about birds. There are three birds. Nice kill bottom on the pango. Um, this five. is what we expect. <laughs> so I we didn't really get, get to see how that went, but I imagine it was just a small misstep and a hex and impale by lane. The chain yeah. stunning potential in the bot lane is just ridiculous. Oh my god, yeah, it's huge. But... You know, what we were talking about earlier, Pyrian, you were saying you don't like five pango, and I just wanted to know why. Because it's 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 just sucks. It just no, sucks. No, it doesn't. It sucks. Just pick a it pick, does a, not pick suck. a normal flipping five. Don't be picking these. Oh no, no, pango five. It's well, a waste that's of your time. Boomer vein, just not. Ooh, boomer. I'm not a boomer. My mum and dad are boomers. How dare you? I'm genuinely <laughs> insulted. <laughs> You're booming. I'm Gen You're X. Shutting down. You're shutting down all the new technology. No, I'm not. It's just not good because, well, he died. What? He died. Tundra, Case closed. Tundra begs to differ. All I'm saying oh? is, if they go on, if they go on uh, on your carry, what are you going to do as a as a five pango? Oh, this poor life stealer. Oh, smashes um, the ground in rage. Case. All right, they're they're safe. They got out of there. But that's typically what's going to happen at this point. I don't think Lifestealer should be playing on the bottom lane anymore. Yeah. It's probably time for him to just take over the triangle and just sit there comfortably for a while. Uh, Slardar with amp damage, it's too much, too much of a kill threat right now. And Vizard just unless, come down here. Lifestealer's like, do you know what? I'm going to the jungle. Sod this. You can have the lane, Vizard. That's what's happened here, I think. Well, that's going to be some oh! sort of level oh! Oh, oh Jamie! Oh! oh no! Oh, it was almost a godlike escape. It's the humiliation. Oh man. Yeah, Puck's having a bit of a rough one. You know, Jamie stepped into the lane, complete confidence and aggression. Just a little bit of a miscalculation can make it so that if you're playing versus Alina with a support like Pangolier, one or two deaths is going to set you so far behind. Yeah. Now Pangas like come up here. Top. Lots of rotations. This is good. Uh oh. Oh, this could be the end of Wyman. Oh, oh. Oh, nice buck with the egg. They're just going to hit it. Oh, the disarm! This could be big! Batom! Oh, they got it! Oh, that disarm was almost so good. They are all here. The entire Dire team has come up here. This is actually a pretty, pretty good, even though they lost the Phoenix. Look at the amount of time that they're wasting here. Keep power. Oh, and here comes Lifestealer as well. Might get a kill on the puck. Rages. Oh, the bash from Slaughter. Are you serious? He is going to live. Look at this. The entire Dire team is up here, and they only got the Phoenix kill. I think that's hella, hella worth for Di for Radiant. Because Lena's pushing mid. The uh, Visage is catching up on levels and farm. Very good. Oh, my goodness. Puck's gone in and got a kill. All right, I stand corrected. And here comes Phoenix looking for some revenge on the Puck. Going to give him the pee down. Get out of there, Jamie. Oh, he dies. Lion looking for something as well. Slaughter and Lion there. No, the, the two amigos are going to leave. Fair enough. What a chaotic two minutes, I have to say. Oh my goodness. That that supernova was so close to being good. It's just just wasn't quite there. Oh, it's like it was one... very ambitious. It was. Very ambitious to dive into the enemy team. He probably just thought that he could get it off in time. I right? think I but... think it was relying on the Pango Disarm and that was great, but what it wasn't relying on was the entire dire team coming up there to help out. That was pretty uh, pretty interesting. And Pango slash oh. Buckle is actually an excellent mechanic. Oh, now they're down here. The ball, oh, the puck. Very nice. Place the break. Place the dream coil just at the maximum range, so Visage could not help but break it. Hmm. Very clean rotation. Bye -bye. I love, I love puck. Uh, One of my favorite heroes to play, which is a surprise to most people because I'm terrible, but I do love puck. Don't call yourself terrible. I'm sure you can play. A very oh. mediocre puck. Oh, Effie. Oh, Effie. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, he's going, he's going for it. He's going for it. Void. Probably going to need some help here. Does get some help. The bird. Oh, my God. That was... <gasps> the they got it. They turn around. around. They turn around. And here comes the pango. Oh, level six pango. Oh. Coming in. Get the egg off as well. It's up again so quickly. Are these two going to burn down? They're going to get this lion. This whole assumption comes in. Bazaar's a shield crash. Dead. Double kill. You were right! Support Panga doing it, baby! Wyvern does turn around with the first, but the bird can't hit with his beard! He can't do it! Oh my goodness. What a performance by Kitty. She has been playing so ridiculously well. I mean, with the exception of the bottom death, which probably didn't even mean that much. 
in the bigger scope of things, she has been rotating while securing runes, turning fights, getting the clutch disarms off, leveling up in time, and just rolling in. It's just Ugh. was so so good to see. Uh, what I was saying earlier, Pyrian is actually swashbuckle is an excellent mechanic in defending so Supernova. Yeah, yeah. It's just not like high enough level on Lucky Shot. Just yeah. Yet. Once they get there, it's going to be actually super hard to deal with the with this egg with those disarms. And as you said, like against Void, you can get a good. There is something happening here, Rob. I can hear Laguna Blades. Good heavens! Oh, they get this done. The lion, but the hex. Nope, they do pick it up. Illegal one is in here. Slaughter though is going to have to run against four. In comes Buck trying to help out. Gets the dream coil down on the pango. The life stealer pops out. This is a disaster for Dyer. Oh man, three letter acronym. Coming in. How they impressive. They didn't have uh, a chance there, I feel like. The Dyer team got all kinds of call out. Didn't have Wyvern <laughs> to counter. Didn't have Chrono. Now's the time to fight. Mm -hmm. they, they have been so imposing on the map in these last few minutes. And every time it looked like there was an opening or an opportunity for Illegal to just find a kill, they have been countering with the Pango and just going in with the Lina and whacking away. Right? This is at the point of the game where it's going to be quite scary for Illegal because they're just going to run down these towers with the Visage summons and oh, the man, Lina yeah. for soul. It's and so much. Really Mm -hmm. There's not that much you can do, especially without Chrono, because you're still waiting on your Slardar timings to be able to take these fights. Yes, With look at where Greenbox said... is farming, by the way. Just right up in your face farming. Does Slardar have Blink? Yes, Slardar has Blink, but that's it. Kind of tough to initiate. They've got a, they've got so much damage and, and the disarm and stuff like that. It's actually quite tough to initiate. They're positioning nicely here. Little cheeky ward going down. Oh, run, Wyvern! Right, so the, the issue with Blink for Slardar when you're playing from behind, when you don't necessarily have the most high damage cores yet, Puck does trouble, need a little bit of time. There's trouble mid the finger. Can they get the life stealer? Yes, the range of the turnaround! Oh, there's no result! One more click! They get him! Oh, nice get him with a dream coil! Nice coil. He was so close to getting out there. So they, close. They were so close to just infesting that creep and it was I think it was like life. three or four seconds cooldown. That was well played by Jamie. Oh yeah, so they definitely do have the potential to make these counterplays on Illegal. The problem right now is just they don't particularly have the follow-up damage, especially when Finger is down with the yeah, Slarder. But yeah. when Finger is up and Slarder has his Blink ready, they can just play together on Slarder and Lion and just like look for some key kills in the back lines, just get in a hero and get out real quick and just set up for a much better fight. Oh, this because... smoke is going to catch a couple. Pango gets his ult off. They can't catch this void, but they are going to get Wyvern. If Wyvern can get the curse off, no, just can't quite get it off. But they did use Tango ult, but it's what, a 60 second cooldown or something stupid like that. It'll be back, no problem. Do you know what? The more I see it, the more this is actually working out really well. Simply because I do love items on Pango, and I think he, it's super worth getting farm on him. But do you know what? I've often seen people struggle in lane with Pango. And I think maybe if you have him as a five, what will you really need especially early on is that pango ult right like that's just such a big game changer and that's uh what i wanted to talk about so pango 5 is actually one of the most popular five picks at the last esl one event really and the reason for the, yeah so he was actually first phase contested in a lot of these games uh tundra in particular were playing him quite often on fada and it's for the reason that you said you don't particularly need items early game you just need your ulti to be able to set up for kills yep. and you just need to be able to be that body in the bottom lane after your carry goes to the jungle to just sit and defend your tower right. and just be a little sneaky right because a crystal maiden defending her tower when her carry <laughs> yeah, goes just to run the jungle, it down will die but yep. a pango has his shield crash and swashbuckle and can just do it safely so there's there's a lot of nice and neat ideas, and I think Kitty has played it so well. So yes, far. absolutely. She's everywhere. She That's also made it look very good. Playing playing it very well. They're gonna go for mid tier two here. They've already taken top tier two. The void. This is the the issue with void. I think uh, he probably needs a, a lot more farm than he's got. Oh, they're gonna try and pick off the Slada here, and they get him. He gets the crush off. Oh, he's gonna live. Do you remember when Sunray used to slow? No, I don't. I do not remember that. Sunray used to slow, and oh. if it were the old Sunray, that Sunray yeah. would have died. By the way, that spell has been nerfed so many times. Well, it was it was so strong. But it's strong. still so good. 
Yeah. I can't remember I which, I think point. it was at a TI. Sorry, FB. Go ahead. Oh, at, at some point, I felt like maybe even last year or a year and a half ago, I honestly felt like if you removed every single spell from Phoenix's kit and just left Sunray, he would still be a useful hero. But it's not at the point where it's absurdly strong anymore. They've right. nerfed it so often in these last few patches, and it's constantly losing damage and just losing duration and things like that. I mean, it is pretty nuts. It is, it is. You know, one of the best feelings in Dota, pressing Sunray on an axe or a timber saw or something like that with a spirit vessel, and boom, they're dead. They're just stuck. Big, big joy. Big, big joy. <laughs> big joys to be found in killing axe and timber saw players. I love axe. What are you talking about? He's he's like, <laughs> my, he is of literally course. my most played hero. What's wrong? Oh, I'm sorry, is it a boomer pick? Every two boomers, you pick axe, you What's wrong with axe? <laughs> and I run underpants <laughs> axe, all right? Axe needs no axe. That's the kind of axe I'm talking about. I don't make the rules. You do, the apparently rules. you do. <laughs> Nothing wrong with axe. Love it. <laughs> well, axe is... So, you know, when Ame was playing this shard axe, it was disgusting having this oh, axe see. in your oh, pubs. Yeah. No, no, no. AFK form is shard and mantis isle. Yes. That's an axe player. No, no, That's I, I'm I mean with you on that. Player. Like, I'm with you. That that was so stupid. Like, <laughs> it was hilariously broken, and I'm glad they removed it. And I say this as someone who loves playing axe. Like, yes, I, I agree with you. But he doesn't do that anymore. Now he's just back to regular all axe. Axe likes this very much. Indeed. He didn't like that nerf, though. Axe does not like this very much. Oh, you know who really liked the nerf? Go on. Us, the support players of the world. I we play support as well. Enjoy. That's, my, that's my vibe. Because it was, it was stupid. Oh, hot. Oh, gets the yules off on Alina. No catch for you. They are really penned in here. Boyd. Can we switch to net worth, Rob, please? Is that okay? That would be nice. Can we also just get a quick item check, please, on the life sealer and the void? Wow, void. So do you have the sixth? Sixth. Oh Wait, my heavens. Have... Oh, we do have an armlet and a maelstrom up on the life sealer. Probably not battle ready quite yet. Definitely can go this team, but I would like to see a green box just farm a little bit more before they go for more of these five man plays. What would you want them to get next? Oh, this void. So sad. What would you want to see the the life stealer get next? Uh, I like I like this idea of a basher. Really, can go for anything. I, I personally am quite fond of SNY on life stealer, mm. especially if you're playing versus things like Coil and Winter's Curse. It would be nice to get that status resist up. Yeah, for but sure. There's nothing wrong with a basher here. It's just a nice way to like an extra bit of lockdown on the puck if they do. Get him LSA'd. They don't necessarily have that many instant stuns, right? And Puck yeah. is a very slippery hero. So it's it's a cool concept, especially if he turn, turns into an Abyssal. They, sorry. I mean, the the, the Puck uh, needs this blink, I think, really to, to start doing Puck things. But so far, some some lovely plays. It's just, it is tough. I, I like this Witchblade. It is, it is awesome to get, but... Uh... I think the issue is after you get the blink, what are you going to have to get an ax to so that your dream call affects mm -hmm. the life steal of the panga? That's a long time coming. Are they going to have that time with this push? I'm not sure. I think they they can. Uh, three letter acronym do need to impose themselves a little bit more because it does feel like uh, illegal are getting a bit more out of the map than they should be in situations like this. But I would like to see ATLA do a smoke. Oh, and they're doing that right now. And hopefully transition that into a Roshan. They are doing it! As as the game goes longer, Puck will be harder to kill. Yeah. And Void is going to have a very good matchup versus a lot of these heroes. Agreed. Also, so Slaughter is going to start being a pain in the neck sooner rather than later. Once the, once the Slaughter gets BKB, it is hard to deal with. For sure. And the pickup of Blink on Puck, I like it a lot. He needs to be able to fight with his Slardar and Lion on the back lines. They do need to be able to burst heroes very quickly and disengage from the fights. Just to set up for a better situation for themselves. This, the A just goes to Life Sealer. That's pretty much what we would expect here. Yeah. It looks like they're thinking about defending this. The Phoenix is down here. Is the rest of the team making their way? I think they are. What do you... 
What do you think about the Sunray and the, the Phoenix Swoop? That's the shard, right? I think for, for Phoenix is that you can Sunray and, and Swoop. Isn't that it? Wait, can you repeat that? For Phoenix. I didn't hear you at all. I'm so yeah, sorry. Allow Sunray to be cast during... Oh, during Supernova. That's right. That's right. So during what, Supernova. What's, what's the question? The shard. The Sunray during Supernova. Mm -hmm. And that has the slow. There you go. I think I'm just wondering whether they should get that next. They're going for the uh, the spirit vessel, but Sunray during Supernova is pretty fun. It is, and by the way, something neat about Phoenix is so if you do use Supernova and Sunray, it goes off of it goes off on cooldown after the egg pops. Uh -huh. However, if you dive with your first Sunray and Supernova, you can use that one, and then when you come out of egg, you'll have another Sunray ready. Good heavens! Which a lot of Phoenix players don't do actually. So. With a refresher, theoretically, you can <laughs> go, have go on, three run or the numbers sunrays. for us. <laughs> you can have three or four sunrays in it a frame. Happens. Four if you do it right. Good heavens. Good heavens. Good so heavens. if you've used sunray prior to egg, and then you egg, yes. sunray will be on cooldown, right? No, no. If you use sunray and you egg. Do you mean while you egg, right? So, so I sunray, sunray, I'm sunray. And you use your I'm sunray. You can press sunray and then, then I decide to egg. Yes. The sunray will continue during my egg. It will continue. Your first, your initial sunray. Then I come out of the egg, everything's easy. off cooldown. Sunray again. And you still have a sunray. Yeah. But if you egg without using your first sunray and you get out of egg, it's on cooldown. Right, right, of course. You don't have a second sunray, right? So that, that's something you'll see really good Phoenix players do, is that they'll turn on their sunray and then dive so that they'll have two sunrays for the fight with a shard. Nice. Mm -hmm. Huck has the blink, nice and he's PSA. now going for the ags. Swagging him scepter. That'll help a lot. Swagging him? Yeah, the swagging him. I like to hear the swagging him. I want to say boomer, but... How is that? Boomer? Listen, listen, it's I get like enough of this. Humor. From you youngsters already, uh, it's not cool. <laughs> I don't flame you guys for being young. Okay, Why are you gonna okay. flame me for being old? You know what? You're not old. You're lovely. Thank you. See, that's you're a nice thing to say. Very, very welcome. Flipping zoomers with all their compliments and stuff. See, it hurts. It hurts. Exploding cow. What have they got? <laughs> ah, yes. Oh man, go for a gem next. Really take control. So actually, I really, really like this Solar Crest pickup. It's what you do typically on a 4 Visage, but in this game in particular, it will negate the armor from Ampl Amplify on Solar Dart. Oh, nice. Yeah, and, yeah. Yep. Also, you can put it on your Lena. It just becomes a machine. Oh my god. Yeah, that's terrifying. Yeah. This Lena it's is It's a lot of fun in high ground sieges. Good lord. Uh, so she did go for Shiva's. I love that item pickup. They are itemizing so well. On Radiant side, the Shivas is so good because what? Where is their main damage source coming from right now? It's right. going to come from the amp damage and the puck and the faceless void right clicks. But Lena had the the Shivas in mind and got it, and it's such a good timing to have it too. They can actually comfortably take these fights with this item. Dyer are doing a really good job of dodging them. They have dodged and just them. Finding farms safely. This is like 15 and... minutes of dodging. I want to say it feels like around maybe 10 minutes of just continually pushing bot. Farming it, the Radiant Team, three-letter acronym, rotating down there to try and get something. Can Void pick up this building? All right, this is the this is the strength of Dire Draft, though. You have a lot of high ground threat. If if uh, three-letter acronym do decide to go high ground, there is the fear of Winter's Curse. A well-placed Winter Curse can just oh, yeah. completely deter a high ground push. And a Chrono, obviously, that's going to be the the biggest threat in a fight. But I really like this idea to go high ground before. The dire heroes are back, and it seems like Faceless Void is still not back yet. This might be. Ah, uh, hoo hoo! They're gonna pick it up here. That's the Aegis. Oh, the Chrono catches just one, and Void can't commit really. It doesn't have a BKB. The egg goes down. Look out, Void! But can they get the Phoenix on the back line here? Almost. Kids Power come in and causing chaos. They've got the stun on the puck. Puck's gonna go down. The Winter's Curse does come in, but it's on the life steal. He's gonna be okay, I think. Oh my goodness, that was that was. Oh, that was not great. Illegal really suffering. That Chrono mm. just almost caught three heroes, but instead it just caught one yeah. and way, way out. Grace was just shy of hitting a three-man Chrono there. There's a little bit of hesitation, I think, after time locking in, which 
Yeah. Obviously, you, you, you want. There's a lot of pressure on placing the perfect chrono when you're doing a high ground defense. Yeah. Um, I think that three letter acronym could just go up and keep sieging these rocks if they wanted to, but they decide to play it safe here. Probably just take a high ground and wait for the next stages. Dyer's middle barracks are under attack. Void looking here. They're all chasing. And they catch this lifestealer. They get the crush. Is on the hunt. Yeah, that's a dead lifestealer. But they do blow up the Phoenix on the back line. The Dream Coil catches two, three. Ooh, oh, Lion! Just able to get away there. Can they pick up any more kills? They don't have any of their ults. This should be a chase situation. In comes the Puck. Puck gets out of town. Grace Jam in trouble. Have to turn around and try and hit. But he's definitely going to go down here. Little Lena. She clicks so hard. Mm. Holy cow. Puck just somehow living here. Shiva's guard just missing the slot up. They did mm. lose two. But they got the Lifestealer in return. <laughs> did that Tango click the void like five times and not a single desire. That's unlucky. Uh, the, poor, the poor phoenix. Save me, please save me. <laughs> Where is your freaking disarm? No, but that was actually quite impressive that Illegal were able to find two very important kills yeah. on the, the position three and the position one respectively of that. They're gonna go for this Lena here, but the pity power zoning them out. Oh, but, but hold on, Puck is still in here. They're looking, but he's cancelling these we... blinks. The Slaughter and the Wyvern can't get in here. Puck is a little cut off here. There's the disarm. He's going to miss, and they're just going to get away. Oh, my goodness. Nope, they got the Lena. My B missed that one. But they're not going to catch We the did miss that one, but it looked like a nice little cheeky play by Jamie, just finding Lena in the back lane. That's big. I don't think Lena's Can died we... much. How many times has Lena died this game? That might be. Is that her first or, or only her second death, I think? Can we show the fight recap after the fights, please? Just so we can take a look at the golden experience swings. Oh, she's five. Yeah, she's five and two. That was her second death. Thank you. Thank you. Can... can we can we press that? I just want to see what the network swing was after the Lena death. It's gone. Too late, Rob. Very, very sad. However, I can assume that's just a lot of gold, a lot of experience, much needed, and you know, very, very nicely played by Jamie. It looks like Jamie is not afraid to assert himself, actually, even when playing from behind. He's always jumping on these slack lines and yep. farming dangerously, and that's really what you look for out of your puck players. Absolutely. You must learn to master your fear, or fear will become your master. Puck has learned well. Wow. This lion. Very wise. I would expect <laughs> such wisdom from someone your age. Oh no, it's just it's just from an old movie. That's all. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Dismissive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so uh this this dire ward in Radiant Jungle is actually exactly what they need because it's not really something that you think of when a team is playing from behind, but when you're playing from behind, typically the safest place for you to farm is in the enemy jungle. Oh, and yeah. This is a nice little ward to offset any kind of. It's got some good you know, reach movements. on that ward. Look at that. Very nice. And if you place a sentry on a cliff, actually, you will just barely miss that ward. So I'm a big fan of it. Void closing on Chronosphere, uh, on BKB here. That will make it a lot easier to get in there. And much, much needed. I tell you what, if, when, when you whiff a Chrono like that, there's there's two things you can do. You can panic, or you can suck it up and just do better next time. That's what this Void's gonna do. Gonna land a beastly Chrono on like Lena and Lifestealer and Phoenix, and they're gonna win the fight. They're gonna get this bird here. Very nice. That's a hundred gold freebie. You like to see it? Absolutely. So I would like to see this Lena transition to a DPS build now, just because <clears throat> this Void BKB is going to counter her spell casting, right? But right. Void really, even with a BKB, is not safe if there's a Lena with a Daedalus right-clicking him from a distance. Absolutely. Going for the BKB first, though. That's a that's a smart choice for sure. Uh, they do lack a little bit of damage actually at this point in the game, surprisingly enough, just because of Lena's decision to go Shiva's. But the deci decision was for survivability and durability, and obviously offsetting their main damage, which is their right clicks. They're smoking here. Life still not infested. He's just uh, just going up, trying to debate them here. Going to go for the uh, the outpost Focus. reclaim. Debate. Yeah, they're not falling for it. They're not falling for yeah. it. They they sniffed it out. 
They, they're like, you think this rudimentary trick for us? <laughs> <laughs> you know nothing. We've Roche is up. Field. Let's go. What is the three-letter oh. acronym? The, the, so TLA stands for three-letter acronym, right? Very, very clever. Very clever. Yes. It's very meta. I it is. appreciate it. I appreciate it. So hopefully uh, Dyer can get a read on this Roche, or they were timing it or waiting for it, because if they give them this Roche for free when Karna is up, it's going to make the next high ground push way too hard to defend against. Right, it looks like they are not going to do anything. Is that a shard for Lena? I don't know how I feel about this, the Laguna Blade shard. Is it is it super hype, or I struggle with it? Uh, it's, it's nice, yeah. To be honest, I've never I've never seen it like change a game. I've never seen it align perfectly and just get a four or five man looking up. But right. I mean, in theory, it, in theory, it, that's the it. thing. It's an in theory. Uh, in theory, this is going to be awesome. But I feel like it just <laughs> never really is. Yeah, I, I've just never seen it like have the setup that it needed, or actually just make or break a game. Yeah. Yet. Yet. I buy it a lot in my pubs thinking this will be the one. And I send all my gold on an Ag shard on my support Lena. And then I just don't do what I expect to do. But chat, for, for anyone in chat wondering, uh, that quote was from the film Mystery Men, which came out in like 2001 or something like that. 1922. Yeah, because I'm old. That's right. <laughs> How old are you? Like tw 21, 22, something no, like that? No, I'm old. I'm old as well. I'm 26. Oh, oh God. This, if this yeah. wasn't a PG stream, I'll tell you what, there'd be some cuss words coming your way. <laughs> 26. Damn, I am 26. Yeah, oh. but that's not old. Well, to give you some I idea, when I got married, you were six years old. Well, just to let you know, when I get out of bed sometimes, I feel like my muscles just ache, my back hurts. <laughs> I'm barely functional. Oh, I cannot gosh. operate. Oh, yeah, that must be tough. It is quite tough. That's bad posture, I, or a, a bad gaming chair, or something. That's not age, surely. You need one of those, I mean, one of those super gaming chairs. I, I have a gaming chair. It's a good one. It. It's got lumbar support and such. Do you, can I make a recommendation? Can I make a recommendation? Because I used to have one of those gaming chairs, and I also used to get bad back. Get an, one of those office chairs. The sort that a really? boomer would sit in, in their office, all right? Because they are designed for people my age who actually have back problems, and they are so good. So, yeah, I would recommend one of those. You can pick them up sometimes, uh, surplus office stuff. When, when businesses go bust. Oh, Buck's going to get out of here. Very interesting. Just think about it. That's what I'm saying. Just think about it. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. So, Lena is actually going for Silver Edge next, which is a insane increase in DPS. However, I, I do prefer the data list just because you are critting on your percentage base damage, I believe. Right, right. But it, it just increases your DPS by a lot, and it's just a nice mobility item, and it's it's been buffed very heavily, and... I thought I, I thought we'd see it on pretty much almost every hero of the patch, but oh, the sense, puck's gone in with a three-man dream coil. They're looking for the big curse, oh, and they the get curse. it. That's a big curse. That's Phoenix A down. The Chrono catches too. The disarm misses. The, oh my goodness, he's chasing the Visage was not actually in there. I don't think Greenbox is trying to run. No buybacks coming out. Lion does still have finger. They're going to pick up the kill on, on, on the lion, though. The Lena goes down. The Lena is down. Exploding cow in trouble. These birds are getting clobbered. Who's left? Key power. Kill the birds. Puck's on the chase. Can he catch more? Oh, God. Look out. There's a surprise in there. On the blink away. And they live. They did manage to stop the push. The Aegis was popped, I think. Oh, the Aegis is still going, is it? What does that symbol under Lifestealer mean? Oh no, the Atos! The Atos! <laughs> the enemy of the puck does never use. He's dead for 111! Oh, why is he no. dead for so long? Good God! I was about to say that that was looking so bad for TLA until they managed to get that puck kill in yeah. turn, just making everything that happened actually not that bad for them. But, you know, impressive impressive ability by Ooh, Elite Elves the bash. just... Oh, the root! Sawdog pops his BKB, they're gonna try and get this kill here, and they get the Aegis, that's it! 
Hey, Pow is trying to run away. He's gonna go down. One more right click. The egg. Click the egg. They get the egg. But they're still, they're still okay, TLA. I think they still got the two that basically want to go up and hit the buildings. Are they gonna leave? Fair. Oh, There's the fight recap for you. Big gold change. Things looking up. So, like we were talking about earlier, the longer this game goes, the better it's going to be for Illegal because Void is an excellent hero versus uh, Lifestealer versus Pangolier versus Lina and Visage on the backline, so you can just go on them and amp damage. The longer the game goes on, more damage done by the Void and the Slardar. Slardar himself can be a force of nature in the late game, right? And Absolutely. Puck is going to be that much more of a nuisance. This fuck has been the reason why they've been able to take these fights. He's just been going in and creating chaos and getting out and just annoying the back lanes very heavily. And if you look at TLA's draft, they don't actually have that many instant stuns. They don't have any, really. They have they none. They do have the LSA, but uh, a puck can dodge LSA, right? If he sees the animation. Absolutely. You, you probably are going to need that Abyssal as the game progresses. So really nice, really nice read there by Lifestealer to go for it, but it's just going to get harder and harder, and you really don't want to mess up with these Aegis's. Puck has an Ether Lens, by the way. This game. What's, the, uh, what's the thinking behind the, the Ether Lens? Um, probably just increased cast range on everything, really. It's it's not bad here, right? Your blink cast range increases, your ability to cast Quail from a distance, your silence, your, 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 your everything. Probably just safety and an Octarine core for later. Yeah. So, yeah, for the build into Octarine core, that makes sense. Yeah. Because the more coils you have, the better it is, right? You want that spell to be off cooldown because Absolutely. It's, it's the reason why they're able to take these sites. That three-man coil was beautiful. Huge. Does the puck have ags yet, by the way? I didn't see. I, I don't think they do, right? Check. I don't think so. Oh, I just got a pop of my phone that I'm casting Dota with you. Good job, phone. Just reminding me what, what I'm doing. Thank you. What do you mean? <clears throat> it was like an alarm that I set to say cast oh. and it, it was set for now, so I would have missed most of the first game. Luckily, my brain was paying attention even. My phone wasn't. I mean, Tyrion, that just happens in the age, you know? Uh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I can't stop. This is too good. Tell, tell me, am I hurting your feelings? No, if I don't so, give a damn. If so... I will not <clears throat> stop. Look, I stream on Twitch for a living. Believe me, nothing you say can hurt my feelings that hasn't already been said. So I just throw up a little scar tissue. All right. I, I respect that, you know. You're dealing with it. It's I'm, now I feel bad. Yeah, you should. I feel I've, been I, I I've been nothing I but pleasant. I've been nothing but pleasant. I understand that feeling. It's flaming you're me. You're a pleasant and lovely gentleman who <laughs> hates the anime. No, which I don't makes believe you now. See, this is what I knew. It. That's what it is, isn't it? I don't like anime, so you can have a go at me. I knew it. All you anime fans, no. make out you're so nice. No, no. You comment once. You comment once. I've, I've avoided talking about it. You brought it up every time. I, I commented on it once, and now it's like, get him. Yeah, he's not in the club. <laughs> can they get this lifesteal here? <laughs> Bazong! Oh, 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 the dream coil! The hex! Get him! Get him! The damage! The chrono comes down! Oh, but the LSA beautiful is gonna hold Zonic. up! Oh, they're gonna get him! They're gonna get him! They get what him! They get him! They get him! They're gonna get the leader as well! And they get a bash! Oh, in comes the Pango trying to cause trouble, but no, the BKB from Slab is gonna put a stop to that! The Soul Assumption dodged by Puck, he's on the chase! Oh, and Lino's now fighting the Puck! The tables have turned! Dodging! Dodging! Living! It's very chaotic! We're chasing the wrong end of the fight here, Rob! Yes! Lena's so low! She's gonna die! She's gonna die! Can they get her? Can Jamie get this? Oh! Jamie gets the kill! He has been rooted! Me and one on the back lines! They picked up three! This is a disaster for TLA! Oh, hold on! Uh, Can he get out here? He does! He does! Oh, oh, no, he can't live! He can't live! Get the fuck! Dead for two minutes, but in exchange for four. If you go down like that, what a hero. Oh, the Winter's Curse, just to hold him up. Cancel his ult as well. No, 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 get him, little Basharoo. Disarm whiffs, they get him, it's all five. Illegal, well back in it. Played, well played, Illegal. Oh my goodness. This game is just gonna get easier and easier for them. They're finding these great starts to this fight finding that life sealer off on the side that perfect chrono by grace jamie with just the chaos in the back again and again oh. and his his ability to just 
draw so much attention to himself so that the rest of his team can just win on the back and on the side. Absolutely. He had the Pangolier and the Lina zoned on the side for that entirety of the fight. Yep. That was just so impressive. So good. And he, he is willing to just be that person who dies for his team. There is the a gem event. down somewhere, by the way. I think that was the uh, the Visage gem. They need to get that back. Yes, I say Visage, not Visage. It seems too aggressive. Visage! I like that word. <laughs> they're, looking, they're looking for Roche. It's not up. It's up soon. It is up real soon, but just not quite yet. Uh, oh, they might get a tier rough. one here. Woo! It's looking really rough for TLA right now. It's It's just... They, they have to be able to be the initiators in these fights. They do need to be proactive. Absolutely. They can't be the ones getting gone on. They have to just try for a smoke, try to place some aggressive vision, and just start the fight themselves. They don't have the best means to do so, actually, because they don't have the blink initiation the way that a Slardar and Lion can provide for it. And the Puck as well, like you said, color. yeah. I mean, their, you know, the, the other thing is, has Egg gone off in the last couple of fights we've seen? I don't feel like it has. I feel like they've jumped the Phoenix and shut that down or just been able to kill the Egg. Like, yep. they, these Phoenix Eggs have not been a factor, and I think they really need to be. And now that you have a BKB on Void, killing Egg should not be a problem. Yeah. For Dire side. Right, so... Looks like another free rush. Oh, another this could be this risky. Another. And they get it. Snatched. Snatched by Puck. Unbelievable. And there's the curse and the chronosphere. Well, this is poorly timed, but uh, I think that some good can come of it anyway. Oh, the egg does go down. They're going to give it a clobber in. The egg again doesn't go off. They get the life stealer. The cheese was grabbed by the pango. They get the stuns. Oh, my God. And they get this Pango, he's super low. Jamie's looking for him, he gets him. What about the Lena? She's ultra low, she's dead! It's a double kill. Now just the Visage left. Get that lion suck going, where you going? Nowhere, triple kill for Puck. And the life stealer bought back. What a snatch. My, I'm, I'm like sweating right now. This is insane. <laughs> Wow! Wowzers. They really, they wowzers. No, they've they really found their footing in these last five minutes. They're confident. They're bold. They're aggressive. They're finding these good coils, these good chronos. They're just going for the plays, and it's working out for them. It's just harder and harder for TLA every time. They do not outscale Dire Team. They do not out team fight Dire Team. And now that the BKBs are up, it's way too hard for Lena to dish out damage. She does not have the DPS build yet, and Phoenix is pretty much a non-factor. Yeah. This Void, as we saw, can just either go on him in the back lines or just turn on BKB and hit Egg. And you know what? Phoenix uh, had I, his I, really thought, I really thought when the Wyvern ult and the Chrono overlapped, I thought, oh god. They've done a bad thing, but it actually worked out because they're so they're so strong right now. They, by the way, there was an 8k gold lead for TLA until these last couple of fights. Now it's a 3k gold lead oh, for for nice, illegal. Nice text. Oh, this is this is just a disaster. The P might help. Not enough. That's Sunray almost kept him alive. Kept them alive. Oh, they are just absolutely in charge right now. Oh, also, I just want to note that Pyrian and I were referring to hero pronouns usually, but we're trying our best to just remember. Yes, apologies for that. It's just that yeah. if I see, like, a void, void to me is a, is a he. So I, I'm generally talking about the heroes, not the players. Apologies for yeah, that. I don't... Same, same with uh, Lifestealer. I'm right. used to saying he for a Lifestealer, but Lifestealer actually uh, goes by they and them. So. Right, sorry about that. It's purely the heroes I'm referring to. It's just... Uh, it's just a habit. I'm sorry about that. Yep, yep. Oh, oh, hello. Could be a pick here. Big clobber in. That's Slardar. Oh, but the curse. The curse. I don't think it's going to get him. He gets the egg off. Oh, but it's in the chronosphere. Oh, no. A disaster. Oh, and they're going to get the Lena here as well. She's clobbered. She's done. She's trying to do some damage, but it's not going to be enough. Oh, my God. They've lost four heroes. Tango is trapped. Get the pango! Silencioed. Oh, this is just everything's coming up. Beautiful. Illegal. Beautiful. You know, we've we've talked about Grace and Jamie a lot, but I just do want to talk about the stuff a little bit too. She's always been ready to blink hacks the correct target to follow up with her impaler. Absolutely. They've just been playing so well as a team. It feels like their moves have been on the nose, cohesive, like they're just on the same page. It's it's really great to 
to see their draft do what it's made to do. Right? You know what this goes back to, I think? There was that period in the game, because I think TLA absolutely dominated the early stage of the game. Mid, I think, we're pretty safe to say, went Lena's way. And they had a couple of fights after that that went, looked really, really bad. And, like, Slaughter just died. Void just died. They couldn't get anything going. And then all of a sudden, it's turned around. It feels that way, but it's not. There was a good 15-minute spell, I think, where TLA kind of eased off the pedal a little bit. And now they're just going in. That's another Dream Coil catches, too. And in comes the Void. They don't have Chrono, but it's not going to matter, I think. He's just going to give him a clobber in. That's a dead life stealer. Death for 95. 50 powers trying to chase. Can't really catch anything. Way, way, way deep. And they're just going to back off. Lina is back. Yeah. Can they hold? This is just the three to hold. When Phoenix comes back, no egg, of course. I'm just going to leave. Yeah, so uh, basically that's what happens when you pick a draft that's on a timer. And you're usually going to be on a timer if you have a hero like Visage who excels in early mid-game pushes and just dominance. But also, if, if you're a carry does not do well in an individual matchup with the enemy carry. You are on a timer. You have to just assert your dominance when you're lanes. Right. You know, get get the Roche timings and just go for these high ground pushes. But they did not go the way they expected them to. I think TLA eased up on Legal a little bit too much in the mid game. I feel like they could have asserted themselves a lot more. But it just it just comes down to maybe like nerves or just I think it's Not also there's a tendency, just while this fight, they do get the egg off. That's the first egg we've seen in some time. But now it comes the Chronosphere. Oh, but they've caught but the These Chronos it doesn't matter. Been they've been huge. Beautiful. They've been huge. That's it. That's a triple kill. Everybody's dead. Call it. It's in the books. What was a few minutes ago, a 9k gold lead for TLA is now a 22k gold lead for Illy Gal, And they are going to take game one. Who's your MVP? Uh, Jamie, I would say Jamie, Jamie on the puck. Yeah. A hundred percent. They they all played so well though, but they really Jamie did. just was able to be the sacrificial lamb in a sense for his team. He was able to just be the agent of chaos in the backlands. He was finding these three man coils early on, and of course, beautiful chrono follow ups by Grace. But just the age of snatching, the confidence to oh. go in. Brilliant. Beautiful. Love that. God, that was such a good game. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you want more content like this, don't forget to visit our website, BritishEsports.org. Follow all our social channels in the description below, and we'll see you next time.